Bronxnet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Center of Performing Arts, where the Bronx Opera Company has just finished up their annual holiday performance of The Messiah. And guess where everyone's going? They're going to eat. Lots of food, lots of fun right here, because we have the taste of the Bronx in the house. President, Mr. Adolfo Carrion Jr., and he's here to tell us about how great the food is tonight. Well, you know, this is a taste of the Bronx. We had a wonderful concert followed by um, uh, this uh, concept where we're trying to attract people to Bronx restaurants. Uh, there's great restaurants in the Bronx of all backgrounds. We've got Italian, we've got seafood, we've got Caribbean, um, we've got continental cuisine but it's all really the Bronx and it's the coming together of so many cultures and so many people from around the world. Uh, and you know, uh, people don't necessarily associate the Bronx with uh, culinary arts, but the fact is that we have wonderful, uh, wonderful tradition. The Italian food in Little Italy alone is a real, a real treat and tourists should come to the Bronx. Um, we've got a, some great Irish restaurants and Irish pubs. Um, I, I understand there's a really there's a there's a really good pie out there that I have to taste. So, I'm what's your favorite way. food of all? You know what? I love it all. Uh, you know, I love food. Um, I cook. Uh, I grew up in the Bronx. You heard it right here. He cooks. Okay, you got to tell us a little, a small little recipe, a secret recipe. Well, um, I'll give you a, a good recipe. If you take a salted codfish and you water it down. Uh, and then you uh, stir it up with some onions and some uh, cabbage and some olives, olive oil, vinegar. Uh, you create a nice salad and you can serve that with just about anything. You can serve it with uh, rice, potatoes, pasta, just about anything. It's really great. You got it right here, Borough President's Secret Recipe. Don't forget that. Uh, so this is a great way to showcase the restaurants. I mean, it's great because people need to realize that there's so many restaurants here, just as there is in New York City. You know, the Bronx is really a slice of the American experience, and people from all over the world, each expressing themselves in their own very special way, and uh, the tastes are wonderful. The, the sounds are wonderful, but the tastes are great. Well, thank you. This is great. Congratulations. Let's go get a taste of the Bronx. <laughs> Are you guys ready for Latin International? Well, we got a great restaurant here, Caridad. Located in Torian and Broadway, right next to the post office. And we're with Fausto Caridad. So tell us a little bit about your dishes. Uh, well, we, we prepare the international food, uh, such as uh, all kinds of fish, uh, all kinds of meat, Italian style, and also we have the, our line of uh, Latin Spanish food, which is great of, of all kinds. What makes your recipe special? Uh, the Chilean sea bass monier. And what else do we have here? Look at this good the stuff. Ro the roast pork. Ro rotisserie or roasted? Ro ro roasted. Okay. Roast pork, roast chicken. We have the sweet and sour pork shop. Potato au gratin? This is potato gratiné. And, and the rice with? Bla black rice and beans. Black rice and beans. Wow, it all looks great. I think I have to try this too. I mean, after this, I'm just going to have to work out forever. <laughs> Steak fans? What? Do I hear steak fans? Steak fans, if you have not eaten at Jake's Steakhouse, you have not eaten steak at all. And Peggy Ryan right here is the owner and founder of Jake's Steakhouse. Hi, Peggy. Hi, how are you? Now, you were born and raised in the Bronx. Tell us a little bit about your background. I was born in, well, I was born in Manhattan, but I was raised in the Bronx on Bailey Avenue in Kingsbridge. I lived there my whole life until I got married. And, and you were the cook, so you know. I do cook, but not <laughs> I do, I love to cook. I love to cook. It's, one, it's my favorite pastime. Tell us a little bit about your restaurant. Uh, Where do you get your meat from? Because it's so good. I don't know, is it from here? We have a meat wholesale place that we get it from in, uh, in Hunts Point. My husband, we own. So we, we age all the meat at the plant, and we bring it to Jake's, and we cut it up. 
That's why it's so good. You heard it. That's the secret. <laughs> That's why it's so good. Yes, it's show. What's your specialty dish? Um, I'll say our T-bone is the best steak that we sell. It's my favorite. It's absolutely my favorite thing that we sell. Um, I like all your steaks, but people like the Jake's filet, which is a uh, it's a filet mignon with the port wine sauce, frizzled onions, and gorgonzola cheese melted on top. That's that's a very popular dish too. Best cream spinach you're ever going to taste because it's made from fresh spinach. I'll vouch for that. And I, everything's great. I think everything on the menu is. is what makes a good steak? The hardest thing to cook, I feel, is a steak. Well, the marbleization in the meat is is what does make it moist and juicy. Um, it's, it, is, it is hard to cook. You have to have a knack for it. Not anybody can... I mean, where should we be cooking steak? At home, I only cook it on the grill. On the grill. I only cook but it how on many grill. minutes? Well, it depends. It's it, on how thick the steak is, how, what temperature you want. Um, I'd say no more than three or four minutes aside if you want it rare. Um, and the longer you cook it, the more it's going gonna, it's gonna to cook through. Do we add salt to it or we just put I, it on the grill? I, I always add salt and pepper, but that's personal t preference. Yeah. It's, you know, yeah. But what's with the, with the butter? Is that, is that, a, is that fault? On, we don't put butter on our steaks at all. Some places do. They, put a melt, they melt butter on top of it. I just think it takes away from the taste of the meat. That's why it tastes so good, folks. I'm sure you all have heard about the famous Umberto's Clam House in Little Italy. Well, we got one in the Bronx, too, and they happen to be the same owner. Francesco... Gentile. Gentile. That was very Italian, of course. Francesco, congratulations. We love your restaurant in the city. We love your restaurant in the Bronx. But you are from Brooklyn. I am. I married into the Bronx. <laughs> but he married and stayed into the Bronx. Tell us a little bit about when this restaurant opened and who is Umberto? Umberto, who is the Robert Ionello, he's the owner of the restaurant down in Little Italy. Uh, two, two years ago, October 5th, they opened up a second restaurant, him and his nephew, Matthew Jr., Matthew Ionello Jr., and uh, we've been there a little over two years now. Oh, very nice. So your, your famous dish, of course, is anything that has to do with clams? The baked clams, uh, fried calamari also, and of course the linguine and clam sauce. Wow. So, and, what, and I mean, how do you choose clams? How do you know a clam is good? Well, they're alive, number one. And the best clams in the world come from the north shore of our Long Island. Oh, wow. So, and uh, each bag that we buy, we can actually track to a certain uh, location. So we know exactly, we have maps, and we know exactly what location each clam bed is at. So has been. Has been, right, exactly. So, uh -huh. uh, and we get them delivered three times a week. So our clams are basically harvested on a Thursday. We get them on a Friday, and they're gone by Saturday or Sunday. I want you to show our viewers how we should eat clams. I want to see the way you're supposed to eat a clam because I'm Greek. Clam I'm right Greek, now. and in Greece we chew, you know we pick them up, we just open them up with our hands. I think the Italians, una faccio una razza, do the same thing. Right in the hands. There is no fork. There is there's nothing. Manuel is going to open up one of the clams. Manuel's been with us many years. He, originally from downtown, and depending on what type of sauce, some people like hot sauce. This is a cocktail sauce. A little lemon. And I'm going to bypass the hot, hot sauce. We do offer forks, but this is not the way to do it. And that's how you're supposed to eat clams. Don't forget, it doesn't get any better than Umberto's Clam House. Great. Let me try. We have some Bronx Net fans, and I want to ask them, are you guys having a good time? This is the bomb, OK? All right, you had a wonderful concert. And now the Fiesta Resistance is food, glorious food. And you're from the Bronx, of course. Absolutely, the boogie down. <laughs> OK, do you know how to eat clams? Oh, yes. Well, let's time. let's go, eat, go, go eat some clams, the best oh. clams in the world, Umberto's. He's going to set it up. All right, that. you're going to watch me do this? We're going to watch you do it. And then I'm going to be on the and news. Then I want you to tell me right. if this is not the best clam you've ever had. I don't know where. Uh, where they can't, where, or what where, other are, where are they from? Are they from the Bronx? Are these Bronx clams? clams are not from the Bronx, but they're from the not South Shore. From the Bronx. Thank you much. Here we go. The lemon. We got to put the lemon. Thank you. A little right, Tabasco. Sorry, you like Tabasco? Yeah. Meatballs. Go for it, girl. All right, watch it. I'm ready. I'm ready, baby. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. <laughs> And we found the person responsible for all of this, the executive director of the Bronx Tourism Council, Doris Quinones. Hello, Doris. Hi, glad to be with you. Congratulations, you guys did a great job. Tell us a little bit about today's event. Taste of the Bronx is the first food show ever to take place in the Bronx, so we're really, really excited. It's part of a, the whole buzz that's 
taking place right now around Bronx restaurants with uh, 25 ranked at Zagat Survey and another six getting the very prestigious listing in the Michelin Guide. This is just part of that momentum. People are hearing about Bronx restaurants and today they have a chance to experience them a bit for themselves. What made you guys uh, take the initiative to do the, the Taste of the Bronx? Well, there are uh, successful uh, food shows where we've actually participated and taken our restaurants out of the Bronx and had them a chance to uh, meet potential new patrons at other parts around the city. But we were really excited about the opportunity to have folks taste restaurants right here in their own backyard. And so uh, Handel's Messiah and the hospitality of the Lehman Center just gave us a wonderful opportunity to have the folks who were here for this event be treated to uh, an extra holiday perk, which is the chance to uh, really get to know these restaurants for themselves. Let me tell you, we tasted everything. And we came back, we went back for seconds, and we're going back for more. Thank you, Doris. My pleasure. And it is, it's wonderful also that it reflects the great ethnic diversity of the borough. So there's Thai food and Latino food, Italian, Irish, and it's just such a wonderful reflection of the cultural diversity in our borough and a lot of the reasons why when visitors come, they also want to experience our cuisine. So this brings everything together. And now we're with a renowned gourmet chef, Michael Sherman. He has one of the best gourmet restaurants in the Bronx called the Riverdale Garden. Remember right, that right. name. Hi, Michael. Hi, how you doing? We had a taste of you in uh, the Taste of New York, yeah. and now Great we are going to have there. a... Great time there. Absolutely. We're so what are you serving here. us today? Here we've got Anson Mills cheese grits with cured duck, smoked chilies, and a little pickled turnip on top. Ooh, you always you know, find these fantastic little mixes. We try to do something different all the time. What inspires you when you uh, create recipes? Whatever tastes good. And mixing sweet, sour, bitter, salty, all the good stuff. You gotta have a little bit of everything in there. Now, I know his wife is one of the best dessert chefs. And what, what, does she, uh, have, what does she have ready for us today? Actually, we have a new chocolatier on staff, Chris Nibel. Chris, you wanna say hello? Chris, how are you? The new dessert chef. Chocolatier. Chocolatier, okay, excuse me. And tell us a little bit about what you've made today. Um, we have an assortment of handmade chocolates um, with both dark and milk chocolate, and they're available in two size boxes, and you can order them from the restaurant. Mm. The greatest part of this job is I get to eat everything. <laughs> and Oh, what a beautiful packaging. Mm. Great Christmas gift. So you all got to go to the restaurant and have this fantastic gourmet food and buy some chocolates. <laughs> We'll be right back with more of the Taste of the Bronx. Stay with us. If you want to learn about, you know, cultures in the Bronx, you can catch that in BronxNet. I've been going to the school for two years, and I hear all this stuff about BronxNet. All this on Bronx, that this shows on Bronx, the BronxNet this and BronxNet that. But I live in Yonkers. Move to the Bronx. I want to move to the Bronx for BronxNet. Obesity, heart disease, high, high blood, blood pressure, pressure, diabetes. These, These are the four silent killers, killers in our neighborhoods. That's why I'm launching Fit Now, a healthy Bronx campaign that will help to make the Bronx the healthiest borough in the entire city. The Bronx will be all about health and wellness because Fit Now is for everyone. Kids, adults, every single Bronxite needs to focus on health by exercising, by eating well, and by visiting your doctor regularly. Everybody's in on it. Fitness centers, the parks department, hospitals and health centers, even your neighborhood grocery store will help to get this healthy Bronx message out. Fit Now is about fitness. It's about nutrition. It's about health care and wellness. It's about the Bronx, a healthy Bronx. So Bronxites, let's get fit now. Get fit now! Get fit now!
running up. There's more up here. Santa Fe Grill, Santa Fe Grill. <laughs> Hello there. Hey, how you doing? We heard the Santa Fe Grill was up here, so I ran up Welcome like a to bandit. At the Mexican restaurant, Santa Fe Grill. You're invited. You know, we have every Friday, we have mariachis. And uh, we have sometimes we have uh, wine tastings, you know. Wine tasting, we love wine tasting. Kila bar, uh, and the, the food is excellent. The Mexican way, at Santa Fe. At so Santa tell us what you have here today. Oh, we came with uh, some chicken fajitas, with some, uh, one of our delicious lobster soup. We have guacamole, chips, and salsa. We, you know, our um, chicken wings, they went very fast. They, went very they, fast. <laughs> they flew away the to people's chicken. stomachs. <laughs> what what makes it what makes a good guacamole? Well, it's just to make it with nice has avocados. Just That's, avocado, right? Well, it's uh, some other ingredients in there. It's like lime juice, some tomatoes, onions, but uh, it's. I'm looking for the secrets here. What do you think I'm here for? I want to find out the secret. I'm gonna write a book. I'm gonna use all you guys. Okay, let me know what you want, and I can get. So uh, what's this here? That's not good. Blue cheese. Guacamole. That we, we're for the chicken wings. Uh-huh. So let's try, let's try the guacamole. Let's see how special the guacamole is here. Hold on. I'm going to put it in a black. I like this color. Here, hold this. Now, I eat a lot of guacamole. I'm going to tell you if this is good. How was it? That is actually the best guacamole I have ever had. I am stealing your recipe. I'm sorry you told me. So tell us a little bit about the soup. Well, the soup is it's made out of fresh lobster too. That uh, we normally use all fresh ingredients, and with uh, we have it. Potatoes are inside. Yeah, with potatoes and some other kind of vegetables. Is this cream or butter? Cream. Oh, it's cream. It's cream. Don't forget to come and visit us on Friday. We have mariachis. Mariachi on Friday, lobster, Friday best guacamole in the whole New York area, I think. <laughs> and uh, these guys are great. You got to check out Santa Fe Grill. Bienvenidos. Bienvenidos. <laughs> and we're with the owner from the Rambling House. He's from? From Dublin, Ireland. We love that accent. Dublin, Ireland. And your name is? Declan. Declan. Yes. <laughs> I'd love to hear this guy talk all day long. It's great. Okay, tell us a little bit about how you ended um, up in the Bronx from Dublin and what kind of food does your great restaurant ha uh, have? We have, uh, we have a lot of steaks, seafood. Um, we do lobsters as well, all kinds of seafood. But, uh, but tonight we just have um, a sample of chicken, beef strong enough, uh, chicken, Gaelic chicken, which is chicken with a whiskey and cream and mushroom sauce. Um, These are all rice. Irish dishes? Well, they're Irish, yeah, and of course shepherd's pie, which is the big Irish dish. Oh. Shepherd's pie is beef with potato on top. How'd you end up in uh, the Bronx? Um, How long have you been here? About 12 years altogether. Oh, you still talk like that? Yes. <laughs> Can't get away from it. We love it. No, 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 don't change. That's why people come to your restaurant. But, I mean, they come for your food, but you know, you've you got a great character. What's a typical night at the Rambling House? Um, we have a lot of live music. Live music Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. Uh, then we do a DJ on a Sunday night, so it's a very lively location. Okay, guys, lots of fun at the Rambling House, the Irish way. Thank you. <laughs> We're with Francesco, Roberto and Che that represent Mike's Deli. And it is the most amazing deli and not only a deli restaurant, they have products. Now, this place is famous for a lot of dishes, but Roberto here is going to show us a special dish again today. Well, we're famous for our meat, our, our, our super sod, our cheeses. But today, what I'm making right here is when our parents used to wake us up, they used to make eggs and cook super sod. Cook super sod, we're putting in an extra virgin oil, and we're going to heat it up so that it all caramelizes together. And it tastes wonderful, and you'll smell it in a couple minutes, but you can't smell it. Wait a it on second, TV. I know you can't smell it on TV, but I'm sure they could tell it's like amazing. It is. Tantalizing. But you know, um, you guys used to eat this for breakfast? Yes, we used to cook this with our eggs. Instead of having bacon, we used to have super side cooked. This is, this is a pepperoni, no? Uh, it's, it's a better than pepperoni. This is a very fine super side. It's a very fine super sausage. Sad, super side, not pepperoni. I want you to tell me, Roberto, uh, about your products, because I know your products are all natural. Well, we have all our products are natural. We have up there, you see our dry sausages. That's the super side as it comes as a whole piece that you see there. Our cheeses that are grown for us. Uh, and, and then we have our sauces that are made. We have a marinara, 
We had a fried Diablo, and we have a Pomodoro sauce. We also have our own pastas. So you could come into our deli, go home with a nice night's meal, and also wake up in the morning and, and eat the uh, leftovers. So I know how to cook. Beautiful. Okay, where are the eggs? <laughs> well, we have no eggs left. Everybody cleaned us out today. So we're going to eat fried super sad. Okay, I want to ask you something. I want to ask you, what, how do you make a good macaroni, good spaghetti? I mean, how long should we be cooking the pasta for? The pasta you want it al dente, so if it's a fresh pasta, you're only going to throw it in hot water that always has salt in it and is always hot. You put it in, you let it blanch, and you take it out. You put it and in, they, you take it out. Fresh pasta. Fresh pasta. A and lot then the dry? Time, the dry pasta is going to probably take you seven to ten minutes. It depends on how much starch they have in it. But if your water is hot enough, it's always going to come out good. You can't make a bad... You can't make a bad uh, pasta that way. Do you put a lot of salt in it? Because I know the Italians put a lot of salt you in the water. Salt in it. You put salt in it from the beginning. You get it going, and you put a little bit more salt in it once once it's boiling. And do you run water? I never run, I never run water on it. A lot of Italians like to run water, and a lot of other Americans run water on it because they think they stop it from cooking, and they clean off some of the starch. They're taking, out, they're taking out the flavor. Taking out the flavor. You okay. don't want to take out the flavor. You heard it right here from Mike Stelly, right here at the Taste of the Bronx. And now we're with Bill Canny, the owner of Black Whale. He's got some interesting uh, things for us to try here today. Tell us a little bit about your restaurant. Uh, it's on City Island. It's been there since 1961. We've been there, my wife and I, nine years. And it's a casual American cuisine, very casual atmosphere. We have a really nice garden in the summertime and cater to the residents, people and local people in the Bronx, Lower Westchester. And What kind of dishes do you guys make? Uh, we tried today to do some seasonal stuff with uh, pumpkin, currants, duck. You know, for the season in the summertime, we go a lot more toward fish, uh, seasonal light food, and it's, that it's looks really good. What is that? This is the uh, brie cheese with red currants and seared duck. And what is this uh, little cup? And it looks really good. Is that a dessert? It's a dessert. It's a pumpkin spice panna cotta. Oh, pumpkin spice panna cotta. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to try that too. Let's try. <laughs> We're with the owner of Siam Square, and his name is. Joe Boonshan. Joe Boonshan. He's got the best Thai food in the Bronx, and not only. What do you guys have here for us so today? Tonight we're serving a Pad Thai noodles, uh, and then tonight we serve a vegetarian style. So vegetarian because, style. Yeah, most of people that don't do it vegetarian. So for tonight, for this fair, we got uh, Pad Thai noodles with tofu. Uh -huh. This is the most uh, popular dishes for Thai food. And what, what is the special ingredient that you use in Thai food? I mean, every country has a special ingredient. What, are you, what, what kind of spices do you use? Actually, um, Thai food is not only spicy, spicy. Uh -huh. So some Thai, some Thai food like this is not spicy at all. Do you use a lot of coconut too? The ingredient that we use, we have, we have all the sugar, garlic. Garlic is the most important thing. Uh -huh. and, and they have a lot of stuff. They have everything. Kalangkau, or we have um, lemon glass, we have onions, everything that hustle you could think of. That's because anything you could possibly taste. think of is in this dish. <laughs> well, That's I think to make a tasty Thai food. Yeah. So now we're gonna find out where this great restaurant is, so we could all try these noodles. Okay, we are at 564 Kapok Street in Riverdale, by 230th Street in okay. the Bronx. Remember that address. Ooh. Cheers. All right, you guys, I think I ate too much. It's time for me to go, but I hope I see all of you here next year at the Lehman Performing Arts Center, the Taste of the Bronx. We'd like to thank the Bronx Tourism Council, and we'd like to thank all of you for tuning in. Yana Dari Lee for BronxNet. Bronxnet. 
Your voice, your views, your vision.